welcome along to the latest episode of the Huddle Breakdown uh, interview series, where we are honored and delighted to welcome our guest, uh, Mike Diaria, who is the Chief Commercial Officer. I think that's your your current title with Second Spectrum. Uh, did you get a promotion too? I looked at your your. It looks like you're you're an executive vice president of of humbly named Genius Sport as well. Is that, is that also true? That's right. So Second Spectrum was acquired by Genius Sports about between three and four years ago, and so we're now part of uh, Genius Sports, a kind of larger public listed business. And yeah, I'm the uh, executive vice president of uh, sports and technology here. Well, great. And one of the reasons why uh, I won't speak presume to speak for Alan, but um, one of the reasons why I'm really excited to have you as a guest is you you live at this intersection of data, technology, analytics, and probably as importantly, if not most importantly, culture, uh, which is getting all of these sports entities and media entities to embrace this stuff because that's how you make a living. Um, so we're, we're really excited to, to, to speak with you and, and get your expertise, really, what, what your life experience has been and, and how you're seeing the industry and how all these things are kind of uh, evolving. But before we get into that, I just want to give you a, a quick, you know, I'll ask you for your own um, kind of introduction for yourself and your, your background. But you, as, as an MIT grad, I saw that and I did a little bit of homework and you have a, a material science and engineering degree from MIT. My, my first question is kind of an existential one which is how much alien material did you get to work with while you were at MIT? (laughs) Have they been hiding alien crap material at MIT for decades and having undergraduates work on it? In the, in uh, you know, the, I tell you, but I'd, I'd have to kill you. I'm sworn to secrecy. Uh, that that one's gonna that one's going to the grave with me. So uh, sorry for sorry for the non-answer. <laughs> well, if I, if I end up seeing you on Joe Rogan, I'm going to be really upset with that. Yeah. Answer. But, Fair but enough. That's, that's, that turned uh, dark very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. So this is another uh, aspect of why I was excited about this conversation because you have a STEM kind of technical background, and and because you're almost like an ideal person to speak with because of this. Uh, this background. So if, for our audience purposes, can you just give a little bit of a biographical uh, history? I want to hear about your sports growing up. I know you're a bit of a sports junkie from way back. I can relate to that um, and, and kind of stoop the nuts how you've gotten to where you are now. Yeah, no, I, I'm pleased to be here. And like, I, I think it's right. Like I grew up as a, uh, a, a massive sports fan. I love playing sports. I grew up playing mostly basketball, but also soccer, football, and, um, and, and someone who's always really into technology. And so that, that took me eventually to MIT. I played basketball at MIT. It was a big part of my, uh, my time there. You know, not everybody, sometimes people don't know that MIT has, has sports teams, but they're like one in the US, they actually have some of the, um, uh, one of the, the most number of different, uh, you know, sports programs there. And so it's a, it's a kind of cool part of the culture that is like less uh, renowned than probably their academics. Um, but that like ultimately led me down this path. Like those are always my two passions when I graduated there wasn't really that much of a space for technology and data and sports. We hadn't kind of gone through the sports tech, sports data revolution quite yet. Um, but, uh, you know, as I, as I went on in my career, um, this company called Second Spectrum started and uh, they were looking for someone who could kind of walk that line between understanding technology and AI and data but also understanding sports because we were trying to bring that that type type of, type of technology to pro sports teams, and so it was a uh, it was a bit of serendipity. They were they were looking for someone who had kind of traversed tech and and basketball, and um, I didn't realize that type of career existed, but it, it felt like it was the kind of exact pairing of my two interests and passions. And so here, almost almost ten years later, we've been um, we've been trying to build and deploy you know the the most cutting edge technical technical solutions for for, for sports all over the world. Well, before I pass it over to Alan here for his first question, I just, you're being a bit humble. So I think you led the team in scoring your, your senior season. I, I, did I see that correctly? I did. I think I held the scoring title at MIT for, briefly for two or three years. And then a, a freshman from when I was a senior, like very quickly eclipsed me as like the, the team, uh, the team, we were, we were kind of in a building phase. My senior year, we were very good. And then the team has gone on to phenomenal success. They've been to final fours and, and, uh, and have really uh, taken off since then. Our, our same coach, Larry Anderson just celebrated his 30th anniversary this year. So he's been this, this bedrock of, of creating a, or what is now a really stellar program. Well, and I, I think that another interesting parallel I, I noted, I, I'm sure you're familiar with the name, but again, just for the audience purposes, uh, Dean Oliver, who wrote kind of the, uh, the Moneyball version of basketball. 
probably right around when you were doing your undergrad work at, at MIT, uh, was, was a Caltech grad, yep. which is, you know, kind of a parallel to MIT on the West Coast and also yep. an engineering student. So, yep. and he, and he played, uh, basketball for a couple of seasons, um, before he joined the coaching staff and, and started to write yep. his book. Uh, so I just found that to be interesting. And I, I just wanted to, I, I analyzed your senior season a little bit. So, I, so, uh, <laughs> do you know what your two point field goal percentage was your senior season, what your three point percentage was, and why didn't Larry Anderson have you shooting more threes? Dean Oliver <laughs> would be really upset with how you were utilized. I admit I do not know what my percentages were, but I will say I was, uh, yeah, the mid-range game was always where, where uh, you know, I grew up in that era of watching Michael Jordan in the mid-post and and, uh, and and playing mid-range. And so this Steph Curry-fueled three-point, you know, Daryl Morey uh, analytics revolution where we, we all finally realized that, you know, a three-pointer is more valuable than a two pointer hadn't kind of uh, hadn't fully percolated through through basketball yet, and so you know it was still uh, yeah we had a, a, a not as um, not as uh, not as big a diet of threes as uh, as I probably would now. Well, and you were pretty close actually. I, I looked at your percentage, your share of threes versus twos was only a couple of percent of what the NBA average is this season. So I wanted to okay. you know I'll close the circle on that. It wasn't, wasn't, Fair it. enough. Fair you enough. weren't derelict like uh, the early '80s. <laughs> teams that were shooting two threes a game that type of thing. <laughs> that's right that's right i'll, I'll pass yeah. it over Al, alan your first question yeah no, so listen that yeah in my background in in it and, and banking project management analytics and and data warehousing and all that sort of stuff um i, I have a very sort of prosaic view uh, on the realities of implementation and, and and especially integration to me whether it's technology or whether it's data the the key the key difficulty is always integration. So, I've seen some of your uh, presentations, uh, and I, as as I have done throughout my career, I mean they're, they're wonderful. I mean the the, the software that you, you guys have developed, the, the, the tracking data capabilities, the real time um, data for for the fan is just incredible. You know the sort of expected expected goals or the expected um, completion of a of a of a shot in basketball was. I thought that, I thought that was fantastic. Um, the prosaic reality is, if I come back to, to to British soccer, British football, and our club Celtic, is that what you were, what you showed there in in some of the some of the YouTube clips that I was watching, to me is like a spacecraft. And if you went into a soccer club, you'd be barely, they'd be barely able to ride a bike. So so how how do you, how how would you help somebody like Celtic, who I would I think we would think are very early adopters, very early stage. They've probably got they've probably got Y Scout account, maybe something like that. I'm probably I'm probably doing them wrong here, but you, how do you kind of how would you sort of make it real for people and help them on that journey? Because they, they can't just jump straight to spaceship. I suspect and they'll have all sorts of integration issues to get there. So just in terms of the, I'm, I'm very sorry, you can tell I'm very very boringly into all the nuts and balls of how we actually do this and make it real for people. No, it's a great question, and I think it's like the most important thing that we did, especially early on, because like we always had this grand vision of how to deploy cutting edge technology, AI, computer vision, machine learning to sport. Um, but you know, you we're, we're coming from a starting place where, where sport was using very little technology. And so the most important thing we did early on was like deploy this cutting edge technology, but filter it down into a product that would make sense for a manager, for a player, for a sports scientist, for the folks who are actually practitioners in the game. We hope you enjoyed this free preview from all of us here at the Huddle Breakdown. We know you have options and we really appreciate you tuning in. To hear the rest of this episode and for much more Huddle Breakdown content, head on over to www.huddlebreakdown.com. We hope you consider subscribing. Thank you. Thank you.